across all developers are planning to make some big changes for the next update. I feel like I always say that, but these are really, really big. I feel like all the players are going to feel like this mech over here bent over and just defeated after this update drops. Again, everything is still subject to change, but usually with the cross out plan changes, they go ahead with the changes with some tweaks. So keep that in mind. Nothing is final. Things are still subject to change. Now, the first big change they talk about is weapons that use the hitscan mechanic. And they mentioned hitscan is not demanding on the player skill, as it does not force a player to lead the target even a little bit when firing, which is exacerbated by the high rate of fire of these weapons. Now, in my opinion, I think the Arbiters and the Equalizers are the main culprits for this change. And you guys might not experience the same thing because you guys might have a lower ping. I have a high ping. 117 on the NA server and 220 on the EU server. I am always using skill, even when using hit scan weapons, because I have to pre fire or pre lead my targets. But again, for the majority of players, this might not be the case. So it's going to be even more challenging for me to use hit scan weapon. And that's why I mainly use hit scan weapons, because it was easier to use with my high ping. And they mentioned hit scan is not the most fair mechanic from the enemy's point of view. Screw the enemy as it does not leave even a minimal chance of dodging. Um, I understand that. I understand that. Again, for me, it's a little bit different. Someone can peek out, shoot me, go back in cover before my input gets registered by the server. But I have met people that only have a 6 MS ping. And for those guys, yeah, they can just shoot and everything goes immediately, just like you're in the garage. I've been playing video games for most of my life, and I've never experienced a multiplayer game with a low MS ping, like under 30 or something. That is something I do want to experience in my life before I go. Anyways, they also mentioned hit scan cannot work in conjunction with penetration ability mechanics. And machine guns with hit scan use an unnaturally large spread and fairly tight range limitation only for balancing reasons. Hit scan will remain only for laser weapons and drones, since adding real projectiles to them will not change the game experience in any way, which kind of makes sense. So basically, all the weapons in the game, except for lasers, and drones will get their hit scan mechanic removed. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of this change. Because of my high ping, I prefer to use hit scan weapons because it makes my experience a lot more fun. But I think the reason they're doing this is if you guys have been playing the new PvP mode with mech builds, helicopters, and ground builds, it is a mess. And machine gun builds, Arbiter, helicopter specifically are just dominating everything. And they're just basically farming. And I think they're trying to prevent that because they have more mech builds or robotic content planned for the future so before they release that they want to balance out that mode a little bit that's what i think so they're gonna take away their hit scan abilities but they're gonna buff them in other areas so for the hornet the cord the wow they're, <laughs> they're even going after the common weapons the hornet and the cord damn they could have left those hit scan to be honest anyways the hornet the cord the vector the sinus the specter the aspect and the punisher maximum range will be increased from 300 to 500 meters minimum spread will be reduced by 42 percent so they're going to start off more accurate maximum spread is also going to be reduced by 45 percent so they're going to be more accurate in general rate of spread increase reduced by 42 percent so they're not going to bloom as much and they're going to add a 70 percent penetration ability which is nice and the range upgrade for the gun will be replaced by projectile speed upgrade i think they're gonna do that for most of the weapons for the rapid fire machine guns the piercer the fidget the imp maximum range will be increased from 200 to 350 which is good minimum spread reduced by 28 percent maximum spread reduced by 44 percent again pretty good rate of spread increase reduced by 43 percent they're also getting a 60 percent penetration ability which is good and just like all the other weapons range upgrade replaced by projectile speed upgrade now for the main culprits the mg13 equalizer and the mg14 arbiter max range increased from 400 to 450 minimum spread reduced by 40 percent maximum spread reduced by 20 percent rate of spread reduced by 40 percent they're also getting a 60 percent penetration ability and again, the same upgrade as the others. The Gungunir and the Nuthong are separate because the Gungunir has a specific perk to where the longer you fire, the more accurate the gun becomes. But it also slows down the rate of fire. So for the Gungunir, the maximum range is increased from 350 to 550. Spread reduced by 40%. It's getting an 80% penetration ability. And again, same projectile speed upgrade. For the Nuthong, the max range is increased from 350 to 550. Minimum spread reduced by 42%. Maximum spread reduced by 40%. Rate of spread increase reduced by 40 percent 
added a 80% penetration ability, again, very good, and also the projectile speed upgrade. The frontal machine guns, the defender, the guardian, the protector, the vindicators, and the tacklers, they're getting a max range from 300 to 500 meters, minimum spread reduced by 28%, maximum spread reduced by 46%, rate of spread increase reduced by 38%, which is good, and they're getting a 70% penetration ability. I hope these changes really help out the vindicators because the spread on those things is awful. Sadly, the hit scan is also getting removed from shotguns so for most shotguns i see that they're just getting penetration ability changes no other changes the parser is getting a hundred percent penetration ability and it's also getting a projectile speed upgrade you guys might have noticed that the miller and the reaper are not here so i have a feeling that miniguns are gonna feel like the reaper because as you guys know the reaper is projectile based it's a little bit tricky to lead the shots and I have a feeling all machine guns are going to feel like that. I hope it's not the same. I hope it fires a little bit faster than the Reapers, but uh, we'll have to see. Some people said it was going to fire like the adapters, which I'm also not a fan of. But uh, this Friday is going to be the testing, and I'll definitely make some videos on that. So you guys can let me know your feedback in the comment section down below. They're even changing the Corvo. I was hoping the Corvo would stay a hit scan weapon because, you know, it's a little bit special. But the maximum range is getting increased. The hit scan mechanic is getting removed. Added a 65% penetration ability, which is nice. And it's also getting a projectile speed upgrade. The Caucasus is a special one because when you lock on, it does everything automatically for you. So I'm really curious to see how this is going to perform. The maximum range is getting increased from 130 to 200 meter, which is pretty nice. Minimum spread reduced by 20%. Maximum spread reduced by 20%. Rate of spread increase reduced by 43%. And it's also getting a penetration ability, which is very interesting. So that was it for the hit scan changes. And now for the next controversial one, limited ammo reserves for everything, except for skinners and melee weapons. I've been talking about this for years, ever since I played Crossout Mobile, where I saw that machine guns had ammo boxes, cannons had ammo boxes, everything had ammo boxes. And it also never made sense to me that the Reaper, a legendary minigun, was using ammo and was weaker than the Miller. That was an epic weapon that used no ammo and was just far superior until they nerfed the Miller and gave it an ammo supply. <laughs> Basically, they mentioned here that it's unfair, which I agree. It is unfair that some weapons use ammo and some don't. And they give an example as usually when there's only one minute left in a match, there's a guy that uses a weapon that doesn't use ammo. And the other guy that does use ammo is usually out of ammo already. And it makes sense. I wonder if they're going to add battery packs for energy weapons instead of like ammo boxes. It's going to be very interesting. They're also buffing all the cannons. You guys have been asking for cannon buffs for a very long time. So right now, most of them are getting their reload time increase. Oh my god, the fat man is going from 4.3 seconds to 6 seconds? Damn. Okay, yeah. Most of them are getting their reload time increase, but they're getting more damage increase by a lot too. So for the little boy cannons, the reload is increased from 4 to 6 seconds, but their damage is getting increased by 45%, which is quite a lot. And also the spread increase while turning reduced by 2 times. And this is the main issue for cannons. Because when you're playing, especially on a hover or even on a car, when you're looking left and right, you might not notice it, but the spread on your cannon becomes so large. And when you see someone and you want to fire immediately, it's not going to be super accurate and you miss. So I do wish, or I mean, they're doing it right now. I hope it's enough, but we'll have to see if it's enough. Because usually when I play my cannons on hovers, my cannon shots are very inaccurate. Unless I use omni wheels and use the hovers where my cannons are locked into place where they cannot rotate left and right the hulk is getting the same changes but instead of 45 percent more damage is getting 50 percent more damage for the fat man same thing but the damage increases only by 44 percent the mammoth and the mastodon are only getting a spread increase reduction while even the common 57 millimeter avenger reload increased from 3.5 seconds to 6 seconds and the damage is increased by 71 percent i have a feeling that these reload nerfs are because of the hadron cabin and the king mine combo Prosecutor, same thing. Reload is increased to 6 seconds and damage only increased by 12%. Same thing for the Executioners. Reload increased to 6 seconds and damage increased only by 9%. Damn. And their comment is, rebalancing the damage and reload time parameters should change how it feels to play with cannons below Epic Rarity inclusive. Yeah, so now when a shotgun brick, a fire dog, or a normal brick bum rushes you, you have to wait 6 seconds before you can shoot back. <laughs> 
it looks like the tempest is unnecessary buff last time is getting reverted like i mentioned it last time like the buff was really unnecessary it was already really really strong the hot rod spurt will now additionally increase spread stability by 25 percent as well so quite nice the raijin cannon is finally getting the balance that i was talking about for so long so they're planning to increase the energy requirements from 22 to 23 points and that automatically increases the power score as well reload time is also increased by 1.3 seconds the bullet base damage is going from 25.5 to 82 and the base blast damage increased from 51 to 61 and the maximum accuracy is now only achieved when fully charged which makes sense the Faroon crossbow is getting a slight buff energy consumption reduced from 14 points to 13 points and that automatically reduces the power score as well oh wow look at that they're talking about the asterisk damage increased by 11 percent and penetration ability increased from 55 to 70 percent they nerfed this thing to the ground and i'm not sure if this will be enough to fix it the phoenix crossbow is also getting some love added bullet damage and 100 percent penetration ability which is nice i'm not sure what the 50 means over there and they're adding a perk that increases the crossbow stability by 15 percent for each hit stacks up to three times but completely resets on a miss eh, i'm not sure if that will help really they're nerfing the young wang again because the clever cross out players figured out the way to still mount it under your build <laughs> If you guys have seen the build on the exhibition, I laughed when I saw it for the first time. But basically, they're going to make the hitbox a little bit bigger, so you cannot do that anymore. For the MG13 Equalizer, they're enlarging the collision module, so I think they're making the hitbox bigger. And your comment is, the current collision module allows you to armor the minigun so much that it becomes almost out of reach of enemy's fire. Um, but isn't that the whole point of building your build? Like, making your guns hard to shoot off or hiding them properly? I mean, that... That's the whole point, but I do know that the Equalizer hitbox was a lot smaller than the Arbiter's hitbox. The Torero Cabin is getting a nice buff. The perk now additionally increases spread stability by 50%. The Staff Spider Cabin is also getting more changes. The perk now affects all weapons from the Rocket Launchers category, except for the Ra 1 header, the Toe, and the ATGM Flute. Also, the perk now increases the maneuverability of homing rockets as well, which is interesting. Very interesting. I was talking about this when I made my rocket video that it would be nice if i could increase my rocket turn speed and i guess the spider cabin will do it all now the dust cabin is also getting some love man they're really looking at some of the old things that have never been changed the perk now affects all weapons from the rocket launcher category as well except for the ra one the toe and the atgm flute the perk now gives 25 percent more damage but instead increases the spread and reduce projectile speed but homing rockets have reduced maneuverability. Hmm. So basically the opposite of what the spider cabin is going to do, but for more damage. I've played rockets with a lot of spread and it sucks. So I'll, I'll take a step spider cabin. Thank you very much. They're nerfing the buggy wheel because it was still just really effective. The perk now reduces speed requirements by 30% instead of 40 before. The oppressor engine is also getting some changes where the perk now additionally increases the speed of projectiles max bonus is 15 percent at the speed of 80 kilometers per hour which is not a great perk in my opinion the swarm is getting a buff because everybody saw that it was hot garbage the blast damage now does not decrease with the distance from the center of the explosion i'm not even sure why that was the case in the first place and the rocket launcher now increases the enemy detection radius up to 150 meters so basically it's getting a build in radar because yeah it was uh, this thing was garbage it still is until the update comes they're also buffing the slaughterer because they also saw that was hot garbage explosive projectile damage increased by 10 percent pre-shrink projectile damage increased by 20 percent perk now increases damage by three percent for every two parts hit instead of a four percent maximum bonus reduced from 32 percent to 21 percent slight nerf and the durability will be increased from 525 to 629 and they also mentioned low efficiency both weapons from this battle pass are really garbage the lucifer rocket launcher is getting a slight buff durability will be increased to 455 and the perk now gives three projectiles for every four parts destroyed instead of six projectiles for eight parts destroyed before after i would say four years the destructors are finally getting nerfed base damage increased by 20 percent yeah that's a slight buff but the perk damage bonus reduced from 800 to 400 percent and heat bonus from perk reduced from 10 to 5 percent and seeing this i'm kind of sad to be honest because the last couple of days i've been playing nothing but the destructors because it's basically my solution against all the stupid metas 
Everything people are using, I just slap them with destructors. And it's really going to be sad if they become less efficient or just trash. The tsunami is getting a durability buff. Durability is going to be 903 points. People also complained about the Mars cabin that it was too effective. So the mass limit reduced from 22,000 to 21,000 kilograms. Bonus to own damage is reduced from 30% to 20%. And to allies is increased from 15 to 20%. And the perk recharge time increased from 20 to 25 seconds. The Griffin Cabin is getting a small buff. Perk active radius increased from 25 to 40 meters. And for the last bit, they're talking about the Cold Driver. They're basically tweaking and buffing them, except for the Grizzly Cold Driver. And most of these changes seem pretty good. And at the bottom, there's also instructions on how to join the test servers. But no worries. This weekend, I'll be on the test server making some content, experimenting with these new changes. So if you would like to see something specific, let me know in the comment section down below. So that's it for this video, guys. A lot of big changes coming, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below because i still have mixed feelings about some of these changes i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did i hope you earned a like and a subscription to the channel if you guys want to see more you can click one of these two videos over here and i'll see you there in a minute thanks for watching have a great day peace